Hi, today I want to introduce the VTTA Tokenizer, an in-game token editor for Foundry VTT. So let's go straight ahead by creating an actor. Let's call him Timothy, the Fishy Ranger. Right now it has the Misery Man as an avatar image and we intend to change it because like that Timothy doesn't look very intimidating. So we click on it as usual and instead of the, the, the normal file select um, dialog that pops up, the awesome application, I need to change that for release, okay. Uh, the awesome token editor application pops up and you can see that you can edit both the avatar image on the left and the token image on the right within the same window because I thought of they sort of belong to each other. They are connected to one character. For NPCs that might be different. So let's go ahead. First of all, you can acknowledge that you've got a preview window for it. That is the exact image that will be used for the avatar image, respectively for the token image later when you hit OK. So we can edit those individually or we can use um, processing pipeline, you can say, or just different layers for the avatar and completely different layers and input images for the token. So let's start with adding the real image for this avatar. And we've got some options here. We can add a new layer by loading it from the internet by providing a URL, by uploading a local file or by browsing the Foundry server. So first of all, we will be starting with uploading a local file. So we hit that button. And I've prepared some things. Here we got a really nice image of a ranger yielding his bow and being on the hunt. I, I like that image because it's very dynamic. But what I don't like is the image positioning. You can see it's, first of all, it's centered and it's aligned that it will completely fill the viewport. But you got these transparent edges on the right and left hand side. So what we do is, first of all, we move this layer a little bit. You can see first of all, the two layers now. This is the misery man. We can move this one up. Then you can see it's on top. It's still there. So we don't need that. Let's delete it. Delete it. And this button deletes a layer. You can see this one is grayed out because we only got one layer. But here we got two, so we can delete the unused or unwanted ones. So misery man, goodbye. Now we are. We'll start with this very nice ranger image. But as I said, the positioning is off. So let's unlock this layer. You can see this image or this lock unlocks and it turns yellow. That means it's active. We will see that later in other buttons too. And what I can do now is by dragging, that is clicking and holding the left mouse button, then moving the mouse, I can repositioning, reposition the image. And furthermore, by using the mouse wheel within this canvas, like outside nothing happens, but inside, I can zoom in. Let, let's position it right there, because I want to show you some different things that we can do with the tokenizer. Uh, the, the image is positioned as we desired it to be, but we have this transparent border on the left hand side. And we need to change that by adding the background color. And this section of the layer tool set is dedicated to background colors. First of all, we see right now it's a transparent color. This is indicated by this gray bluish gradient. And we can click it and just select some color that suits us good. Let's, let's take this one and we see it doesn't fit really well. So we delete it and we can try again. And if you're not colorblind like me, sometimes you will achieve a desirable result with this process. But I kind of see colors really good. So what I did is I use the color pipette tool. I click it and again it's active like it's yellow. And when it's yellow and I move over to the image frame above it, um, it picks up the color that's beneath the mouse cursor. So I can just choose the color that is, that is the one I want. For example, top down here, it's a little bit too dark on the upper upper part and if I use this one it's too bright on the lower part so I use the middle one. I click once, the pipette tool is deactivated, it's not yellow any longer and the color is set. Easiest part. So this one is pretty good. I'm, I'm confident that this represents Tim Timothy really really well. So let's go to the token because that is the most interesting part. 
First of all, what we can do, you see we've got an additional option for adding layers. We can use the avatar image. By clicking here, a snapshot is created and transferred to the token. That is good if you're in a rush, but if you want to like center face your token, you would unlock that layer and you would drag and zoom in. And what you see now, it's getting pixelated because this layer per default is 400 by 400 pixels. And if I zoom into that, it's getting pixelated. So I left that in because some people like that style. It's a little bit more retro-like, but if you want um, a really crisp image, I recommend to just delete this or not import it, but to just re-upload the same image. You can then reposition it to, so, to your heart's desire. Now see, that's pretty much a great image quality. And the misery man, we don't need you. Oh, sorry, buddy. So let's delete him too. So what we need to add for a token? We, we could be fine. It's now a square token. Like we can, we can just see. And it's not saved. Wow. So we are back after some minor technical difficulties. I just found a bug or I should have made that more visible because I said the images will be uploaded to the server automatically. The player that is currently editing his token need to have these trusted player permissions. And I was still logged in with a player for testing servers that is not a trusted player, but a regular player. And on save, I can show you. And now it's working because I'm in GM on save just nothing changed and an error message occurred in the console log. Um, I will work on that on the really stable release so this won't happen but well that's development process. But what we can see right now it has this token at avatar image and it's rectangular and it's totally playable like that. But normally what I came across is tokens that have that round border sometimes really artsy and delicate border frames attached to it. I don't really like that idea to have that. So what I thought, and here's a shout out to the user Gun Kitty on the Foundry VTT Discord. He approached me and he showed me some token images that he wanted to use as I showed a preview of the previous version of the token editor. And he said, I can I use this token frame and then on top of it can I layer another token frame on it and perhaps another one because I got this set of tokens that that works with layering and I said what well, I do layering some sort of but not very sophisticated let me think about it and this is the end result and Jankity you will really love this one because what I can do now is to first add the token frame I want to have and for example I can I can use a token frame that will come with the module itself. I created these for you guys, um, royalty free, license free, do whatever you want with them. Um, these are these are these are coming without cost or whatever whatever kind. They're pretty basic but usable. So I use this token, and right now we can see we've got two layers. This is the bottom layer, and this is the top layer. And first of all, the topmost layer will be drawn and then the next one, the next one until it's at the end. So this is two layers. Let's add another layer just for the kicks. Let's add a reddish tint. And now we got three layers. On the bottom, we draw the avatar image or the token image or the character, then the round border image and then a reddish tint. So this is not what we wanted to do. So let's move this reddish tint to the middle tier by clicking here. Now we change the order of the the order of the images, how they are drawn to the one that we want because the border frame should be not with the reddish tint, but the, avatar, the token image of the character should be. So this is perfectly how we wanted it. So what we need to remove is we need to stamp it like the token stamper tool online. Um, we have to apply a mask to the whole thing. And we can use this with these mask buttons. The whole view composition, as I call it, that is just the rendering of the layers on top of each other, can have one and exactly one mask. And I can define which layer should provide this mask. And of course, we will use the round token frame over here. So we click this button and magically 
everything is like we wanted it to be, but it's still editable. What does it mean? We, we can still unlock the lower layer and we can move it. Oh, see, there's the, but we can do it like that. So this is really nice. And this is basically it. And you can add multiple layers. You can, Jan Kitty, this is for you. I don't know if you've got your, your, uh, your, oh, there they are. These are the ones you showed me. These are basic layers. And then on top, you can put those on. For example, let, let's add some diamonds. And this is for a token frame that is a little bit smaller than the one I will provide. But that's no problem. We can unlock it and just scale it a tiny bit. Here you can see the the threshold of the like how large it gets per mouse wheel push. That's perhaps a little bit too much. I can lower that to to provide a better adjustment for these fine details. But this is how it works, Grand Kitty. And let's delete it because it's not mine. Please don't steal content from any artist. And then we are ready. Let's hit OK. And the avatar image is on the character sheet. And the token image is now with a round border token. That's pretty awesome. So what basically that's the basic principle. You edit your image, you upload your sources, then you rearrange the layers. You set which mask you want to apply to the image and you set a background color. And that's all the thing you that I could imagine what a player would need to quickly create an aesthetically pleasing token representation representation, sorry, English not my native language, um, for his avatar. And if you if you agree, then I'll be happy if you try it out. Thank you for watching and have fun. Always roll crits.